right, coaches, welcome back to Big Drew of the World. I'm Coach Allen here, and this is our next episode of our Fear the Wing series. Um, our Fear the Wing series, we've gone in the last four uh, episodes and talked about different, the history and the modern workings of the single wing offense and how the single wing has come to influence the game of football today. Now, my original intention with this fifth show was to talk today about power and trap. And when you know when I got into it, man, this is way more complicated than when I did my wing T series. My wing T series, I think we almost got down to a T to what everybody describes different things as. Uh, when I got in and discovering different playbooks and how different people draw up, um, their single wing trap and their single wing power. It looks completely different on some folks' playbooks than it does on others. You know, and I got my own iterations just being a uh, dab down backer type offensive line coach um, that I think it should be done or that I would think would work. And, you know, I'm sure there are plenty coaches that know better than me in the single wing. I don't want to um, judge that at all. But this one coming up, I think it's good stuff. We're going to talk first about the single wing trap, the trap off of uh, what we call buck lateral. Now, buck lateral, if you remember and go back and watch my wing T episode, make sure we can see. That's really. A little weird reflection there. There we go, coaches. I'm sorry about that. I was using the blue marker and it looked like one of my guards had disappeared. Um, draws up here. So the buck lateral series, everything is working kind of like what we did in the buck sweep series, where you have belly, you have everything to come come off of it, and it looks very similar in how we're working. Okay, the whole time you're almost getting where this back is going out just like it's buck lateral. We ran buck lateral series some at Buckingham my last year. This back is going almost directly into the line. That's where your trap's going to come in. And this back is kind of funky. So in the buck lateral, we're almost getting a direct snap. We're coming up, we're handing the ball, and then we're tossing it to the lateral. And we have our sweep going. We're going to talk about sweep later on in our wing T series. Now, with this trap, I've seen a couple different things. Um, the biggest trap, I'm trying to pull up my notes on my phone here. Um, one of the playbooks I saw. Here we go. Okay, they call it 35. I'm not going to give the name of this wing T team. Um, but they're stout wing team, team uh, not wing team, single wing team, stout single wing team within the state of Virginia. Um, where did I go? Versus odd, and I'm going to draw it up how they do it. Correction versus even start. We're going to start with even, and he flexes a guy out very similar to how Rick Darlington does. Uh, now at Enterprise, formerly at Apopka, they'll flex out. Instead of having this wing out here, he'll be wider. Okay. And this is going to be our 35, so it's going to the left. This is our weak trap here. We're going to be trapping this damn man running underneath. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, and eight. Eight. Yeah. Presumably, boom, boom, boom. Okay, and what they're running here, okay. So we're getting guard right here. He's going to pull. He's going to kick right here. So we're having a wash. Boom. We're having a wash back nose guard up here. Boom. We're having a block back from our center. He's going to go up here to this linebacker right there. 
correct my puller. My puller is going to be this guy right here. Because that way we can get a decent block back. I'm going to draw it all up and then I'm going to talk through sort of what they do. Talk through our rules. Because a lot of these same principles, guys, work in any trap offense. Okay. Here we got the. And then he's following on the trap path or faking the buck lateral and everything there. So this is almost deception when it comes down to it. If you're just getting, I understand, and pulling my notes back up. You're just understanding the play as is, okay, with 35. 35 is a deception play here off the buck lateral series. We got everything selling like it's buck lateral. But then we're coming back with weak side trap. So if I'm coaching points right here, if I'm working left to right on the line. Now, what's cool about putting these guys outside right here. I love this. I loved watching double wing teams um, when you would stack up all these guys to prevent sweep. And then they'd come back and hit you with trap and hit you with power and stuff like that. Okay. So all we're doing right here. We're just taking this angle right here. Where is this guy going to be sitting at? Oh, the better angle right here, if he's sitting head up over top of what I would call a tackle, you know, you can call him guard over, tackle over, whatever you want to call him. If he's sitting head up right here, in my opinion, it's easier to get him to block back, and there we go. Um, this scoop block right here, they're looking at a double team when you draw, but I think he can almost scoop and go to the next level if he needs to. You know, between these two guys. Now, working, going back here and working left to right, what's cool, like I said, is we don't need to block these certain level defenders in trap. If they're going to play us out here with more guys outside of your standard tackle box. So, our backside tight end right here, he's dipping and ripping. He's getting off that trap man right now and going up to linebacker. He almost wants to create this wall. Okay, we're forcing this linebacker in to get a wall here. If he goes outside, I'm going to be honest, that's fine. It's going to be tighter than you expect. Here, it's all about fanning back with the wall right here. All right? If this nose guard shoots his gap right here, this center's got to know he's got backside A-gap responsibility. Okay? He's down, gap, back, gap down, backer. Okay? So where they have it drawn up or the note, where the back play side guard is getting that nose guard. Well, if this nose guard shoots a gap right here, obviously now that guard, that backside guard has got to dip and rip and get off that and get the linebacker. We worked on that, and we've talked about that before with our down block double team combos. Okay? I talked to you here about ba basing your puller here off of who's got who, – where is this man positioned? Okay? The further I – to me, I'm more inclined to pull this backside guard the further he gets out. If he's head up to outside shoulder right here of that tackle, I'm more inclined to pull that guard. But right here, we can pull that backside tackle and we go right there. And then we don't need to mess with that guy. Okay, dip and rib, give up to the second level because we're hitting trap right here. And these guys are almost got to be held by that buck lateral action because if they start getting sucked inside, you got to hit them with buck lateral. You got to hit them with a sweep. You know, single wing coaches can correct me on that one. But if I'm just watching the single wing run, it's operation. If they start getting sucked inside right there, I'm going to hit them with sweep. I want to get north south real quick in this series and see what's going to bite on them. And what's cool about the buck lateral is it's built a lot like, as I pull it up versus an odd formation, it's built a lot like the Wing T series. I'm going to do myself a favor right here. We're going to keep everything. Yep, you can see that. I just wrote with Sharpie on my whiteboard, luckily. I'll teach you a little trick of the trade when we get down to the end on how you can do that, keep it, so that way you don't have to always be writing back your X's and O's. 
Okay, here's a versus an odd front. They suggest an odd front to be if we're head up over that him. Okay, you you defended an unbalanced line before. You're going to shift everybody to the unbalanced side. So this is sort of how they base in the playbook. I'm sort of taking off of here. Bases everything on even odd. They don't necessarily dictate between um, a 3-4 versus a 3-3 scheme. It's all even odd scenarios. And again, they're going to give us 5-3 here. I'm going to walk down. I will say the one thing I do not like about this playbook is I made sure we got all of our guys. One thing I do not like about this playbook, and just in all honesty, is that I wouldn't draw this up. I would put more defenders in the box to draw it up against and see what happens. Well, if you put more defenders in the box, we can block that. I'm going to show how we can. Um, so we're going to go weak side trap 35 again. That's our same action right here with the buck lateral series. Snap. We're faking this toss around right here. Okay, and we're coming and coming back and following the pulling guard. Okay, so we're coming here. Still there, one to pull. I'm going to draw everything up. And then we'll talk about it. Okay, you get a little image there right now. We're running inside of these guys again. So once again, we don't have to mess with them. All right, we're in those down blocks. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, we're trying to rip off and get this guy. We'll leave him alone. I can go outside shoulder to get to the linebacker, and I want to wash him down into this chaos over here. Okay, play side guard. Work to see if anything comes through here. But then if it doesn't, you go up to second level. Here, I don't like sitting on the double team like this. I'm going to be honest. Um, I would almost go this particular playbook. They're pulling that tackle a lot. This is probably their main pull guy. That's how they're putting it up. There's nothing wrong with that because they can also set him up to pull in the buck lateral. Um, but I'd almost pull him, get him going second level. But that's just me. Okay. We'll go back to what they've done. We've got the standard reach block. Our heck, man, you can block back to make sure he doesn't follow. Really, if you pull that guy. Just thoughts here, and then we're getting up to the safety level there. All right, and that's your trap, your weak side trap off the buck lateral series. What they're calling, this particular playbook is calling the five play, or 35, bat, rather, because you have, and guys, you can dress it up, and that's what's cool about the single wing. I'll put my wing back in here, too. That's what's cool about the single wing. Light flex them out a little bit more. He's actually for them out of here. So let's say I want to bring my wing back in here now. With the same type of blocking and system, Okay, you see a lot of here with it. And then now that's our four back coming on what we would call 45. Okay, and it's, I'm going to be honest, you know, I've seen different names. They're all primarily simple names. Um, they're all primarily simple stuff. This is what we're going to call eight. It's coming up next. That's going to be our strong side trap. You see here, I'm erasing everything. My Sharpie, for the most part, has stayed. I'm going to just touch it up. And what's cool about this, guys, is if I go back over it and dry erase markers, this whiteboard has been put through the ringer. If I go back over and dry erase marker, I'm able to erase everything and get my clear board again. But right now, 
I can keep my line set up where it never gets erased, and I don't have to keep redrawing the line over and over and over again. Just a little tip of trade there. I'm getting back to eight. My notes on eight. Okay, then I'll talk about my notes on what Rick Darlington calls six. Okay. Very similar workings here when we go play set. Let's go versus an even front to start. So we're going to start here, 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 here. Boom, boom, boom. They're going to run against six, two. I would probably run against six, three. We'll save all the six, three stuff. Um, with five and eight. I'm making a note now. Five and eight versus a six three is going to come up after this. So, going through what their blocking is. We're leaving him unblocked. We're just stepping up, going to second level, which I don't mind. We're going to just try to cut him off. If he tries to come B-gap, then we got to block him down. That's fine. Center can actually block back there. He can block back there. Our tackle can come down and defend the backer there. We're going to trap this sucker right here. I've seen a lot of two guys right there. Okay. So a lot of reach and scoot, a lot of down blocks there. Um, dip and rip, get up to second level, block back to any tray orders right here for the nose guard. Um, block back here to block the note, block the nose guard here, block back from center to get any pullers, to get any guys who are following the pull guy, block back, kick out right here. That's what we, if you go back to our series on the pool, that's a trap pull. That's a defensive lineman trap right there. Um, I'd like say pull right, trap right shoulder. We're kicking, we're getting out over top, trying to get to the second level linebacker. We're creating a wall right here and we're running that play right there so we're all these people just don't screw with them okay don't waste your time with them. all right that's sort of how they drew it up against the e even um the major changes i would make trying to see if i would really you know if i really wanted to guys i think you have the angles and when we get into power when we get into six i almost like with this lineup more and, you know, you guys can see it. Go six here. And, you know, a little tweak that I think you can also do to run your power, run it more traditionally like wing T is, and this is one of the things um, I was going to say Rick Darlington gets into when we talk about six. We talk about power with the double team, but this just shows you how easy power is going to be. We can just snap right there, and now here we go. All right. It's fairly simple. Um, that's it's even. So it's odd. Yeah. That's the one thing I don't like about this playbook because when I've drawn it up in single wing coaches, feel free to comment in the section below and blast me. Um, if I'm defending the sig single wing, okay, I'm playing a nine-man box. That's just me. Now, then you're going to come in, we're going to talk into why the single wing is such a good passing offense and how it kind of opens the game up that way. So just different stuff as I pull my notes back up. And I'm sorry about this, guys. I just don't want to get it wrong when you're talking about an offense that isn't your traditional offense. See here, I hate this because they're, they're drawing it up. I'm drawing it up as I'm giving it. It's not necessarily how I would defend it. Um, but we're going to draw it here against 5-3. Sorry about that, coaches. I played around with the audio 
audio visual effects, my um, finally figured out my light in my dining room here is sort of blocking out certain things. So I want to slide the board over. It might be a little bit crooked, but uh, this gives you the best view. We're going to talk again about eight. We're going to talk again about eight coming up and just how we block that now against what we would call an odd front. Again, shift in the center and what we call even versus odd over one to the unbalanced side. We're going to talk about eight. Okay. Running against the odd here. We're going to block back with our center. We're pulling now. Okay. Double down here. They're going to block it like power, whereas versus a normal trap. This is their eight. Their 38. Okay. So there's our guy we're kicking. And sort of an easier time. All right. Seeing what we need to do there. Okay, once again, we can leave them out, leave them out of our blocking steam. Just a very quick turn, block back, sort of a good jet, good center exchange there with the guard, almost an X block when we get off the block back here. We get this double. I would force this double team, if I could, to the lap of the backside backer. Because then we have... Our far, our unbalanced tackle, or tight end, dipping and ripping and get off our trap man. Here, we don't need to block him. He's outside of the zone where we're running. We can dip and rip and get up the backside, get up the play side backer to create a hole there. Um, now, I said I wanted to run five and eight versus six three look and just sort of draw up how I would run it. Okay, let's start with eight since we're talking about eight. You can see my. Uh, this is because I'm drawing over it. I told you it erases. It's Sharpie, and it erases if you draw a dry erase marker over top of it. Blow your mind there. Okay. Let's go. Oops. Sorry about that. Coach is just moving things around with that darn... Darn light. Okay. All right, coaches, we, that should solve our light problem there. And it's a little bit easier reach for me. Um, let's go back. Draw it up against 6 3. Okay, so if we're running eight here, what am I gonna run? What am I gonna do right here? Okay, two things. I prefer to pull this guy. I think I've talked about that before. I always prefer to pull the guy closer to the point of action there. So now you can get what I'm saying here. We have to cut him off so hard, it throws off our timing. Let's say block back and let's pull him. Again, you want to make the rules as simple as possible. That's why I suggest if your rules are going to be that guy's always pulling, that guy's always pulling. Okay. Dip and rip. I'm running this tight. That's just me. I'm going to run it a little bit tighter against the 6 3 look. Cut it right there. Get the linebackers. Get the linebackers. Now I'm getting up to second level where I'm deep and I've increased all this space, what I would call no man's land. That we're outside of they're outside of the running lane. And we can get up to the second level here. Okay. If you really want to play back with it, you don't think that's a good enough. We need this center helping back here. And we need to do this. Well, you can send him here to him over top. And we're going troop gap down back or right there. Okay. And if you really want to get into it and you want to run it wider like power. Right there. Okay. Let's take a look at it the other way. Yeah. 
if we run to the weak side. So if I want to run weak side right here, let's say we broaden their rules of pulling the backside tackle. That's fine. What I would call a tackle. I'm just fanning back, fanning back. Trap right there. Then we're getting up to the second level right there. And that's how you can run it. Now. How does Rick Darlington run his and his formations are going to be a little bit different. So I'm going to erase the board clean. As clean as we can get. Rick Darlington stuff, and he calls power the best play of the game. Like I said, what was Rick Darlington's quote in our last episode? We're going to put as many guys in C-gap as possible and make you try to find our running back through it. Which I think is a pretty nasty ass quote, just being honest. <sighs> He'll flex this guy out some actually. So Rick will also run it like this and run it almost in a, what'd you call it, 41 person or 31 personnel with three backs? Yep, three backs and tight end. It's really tight end over. So you got different looks there. So I'm going to draw up what Rick had. And he has his Power Series video available. I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about he sees something. I see something with him that I saw in a lot of single wing type playbooks. So this guy's just going up right there. Okay. And that's we're not going to block down. Okay. Fan out here. I guess that's your kick. Okay, this is really how he's running power. Even think of it that way, I guess. We're going to leak right there. The block back right there. Bang, bang. Bang, bang. Cut off. We're wrapping. Back's coming. And we're going to town. And what did he talk about? He talked about as many people in C-Gap as possible. And that's sort of how he's ran power. So now your kick guy is this H-back, is this wing-back type guy, and we're sort of forcing him out. He's not more into – we've gotten away now from the Buck Lateral series into just body-on-body -body power. And remember the three rules of power that we talked about within the single wing. You know, we talked about in our wing T series, okay, we want a double team at point attack. I like that down block double team. Okay, we want a kick out. He did that with his wing backs, and we want a lead on backer. That is your true traditional power series. What I like about power and trap out of the single wing is if you want to do it out of the buck lateral series, you have the deception. Um, we barely touched on this, guys. It's been, we're in here almost 30 minutes. I haven't done a 30 minute video in a long time. Um, because I know a lot of us don't have 30 minutes to sit down and watch a video. We fast forward, we get to the parts we want. Um, you can run single wing buck, uh, you can run it out of the buck lateral series and it'd be sort of a deception thing, similar to the buck sweep type series in wing T. Um, you can run it just straight like what I just showed you with Brick Darlington, where bodies on bodies, we're going um, trap or power in C gap, right here, right now, see who's got the balls to stop us. And I love that shit, man. Um, I love both ways of doing it. And you also have the deception where you can bring the wing back in and run wing back types of traps, wing back, and you're running the same type of block and you're just creating a different player getting the football. Um, I told you I saw a different numbering systems, different wing systems, okay, uh, numbers, holes, um, players. I mean, stuff was as simple. The, the playbook I was doing a lot of my work off of, it was as simple as calling it, here's the five, here's 35. So you can call in a play and call it 35. And the guys know what to do. If you 
establish within those principles. That's why I talked about. I prefer the guy next to the center, guard, tackle, over whatever you want to call him, especially since we're talking about this unbalanced thing. I prefer him um, making a rule that's simple, that that's the guy who pulls. Okay, if we're going to go 35, then I want the guy on the right side, the right guard, to pull. If we're going to go 8 or 6, 38, 36, I want the left guard to pull. Okay? And that's sort of a difference there. Um, but make your rules simple. Apply them. And, you know, that's how we get into it. We're going to talk more next time, okay? We're continuing this series. I hope you've enjoyed the single wing so far. We're going to continue next time in our Fear the Wing series with the buck lateral and talk more about what works off the buck lateral series. We got in just a little bit in the power and trap, and that might come back more when we talk about buck lateral series next time. Um, until then, coaches, I hope you enjoyed Fear the Wing. Remember, our job is to put points up on the scoreboard and win games. You want to put points up on the scoreboard and win games, you got to dominate in the trenches. And to dominate in the trenches, you got to know that big's rule the world. I'll see you next time, coaches.